In the late 17th century, mathematicians were pondering a problem posed by Claude Perrault. What is the path of an object starting off with a vertical offset when it is dragged along by a string of constant length being pulled along a straight horizontal line? Gottfried Leibniz was one of the first mathematicians to study this problem. To make more sense of this, let us rephrase it in the following way. Imagine a dog on a lead, being dragged by its master. What is the path made by the dog if the master walks in a straight line? Imagine the red straight line is the leash, then the dog is on the curve, and the master is on the horizontal axis. The name given to this curve is Tractrix, which is derived from the Latin for drag or pull. Let us now consider some more general properties of curves. Look at these curves. They are all known as plane curves. This basically means we can draw them on a piece of paper. The circle is another example of a plane curve. See how the edge of the smaller circle appears curvier than the edge of the bigger circle. We need to find a way to quantify how curved the curve is. Notice how the edge of the circle has the same curvature all the way around, but not all curves have constant curvature. Look at the tractrix. We need to find a way to measure how curvy the curve is. This is what we call the curvature. In this case, the curvature is 1 over hyperbolic sine. We now find the oscillating circles. This is a way to demonstrate how the curvature changes along a curve by drawing circles of the same curvature at each point on the curve. Notice how the circles get smaller towards the top of the tractrix. This is because it's curvier here. Now look at these plane curves. Can you guess where on each curve has greater curvature? Watch the oscillating circles. Were you right? The green line you can see is what we call the evolute, which is plotted using the center of the oscillating circles. One reason the Tractrix is so interesting is that it generates a special surface. If we spin the Tractrix around the axis, we get the following shape. This is called the pseudosphere, a name coined by mathematician Eugenio Beltrami in 1868 when he used the surface as a foundation for hyperbolic geometry, which is used to study the shape of the universe. Now let us consider some of the more general properties of surfaces. When dealing with a curve, we describe it with just one curvature, but for 3D shapes we need to have a second curvature to describe the properties of the surface. These are called kappa 1 and kappa 2. Using these we can find the Gauss curvature and the mean curvature. The Gauss curvature is given by kappa 1 times kappa 2 and the mean curvature is kappa 1 plus kappa 2 divided by 2. If we take the Gauss curvature and the mean curvature, we can see certain properties of the surface for a given point. If the Gauss curvature is greater than zero, it is elliptic, which geometrically looks like the two curvatures are going away from you. If the Gauss curvature is less than zero, it is hyperbolic, which looks like a saddle, where one curvature comes towards you, the other away. If the Gauss curvature equals zero, but the mean curvature does not equal zero, it is parabolic, which looks like a cylinder. If both the Gauss curvature and the mean curvature are zero, the surface is flat, and if the two curvatures are equal, it looks either like a sphere or a plane. There are some shapes that have more than one type of point, such as the torus or donut. Here we can see three types of point. Now let's look at our surface. Notice that at each point, it curves both towards and away from you, making it hyperbolic. We can show the change in curvature using colours. The top left picture is the change in Gauss curvature, and the bottom right picture is the change in mean curvature. The Gauss curvature for this pseudosphere is a constant negative, whereas the mean curvature is given by a hyperbolic trigonometric function. This constant negative Gauss curvature is what makes the pseudosphere so interesting to mathematicians. 
Now that we have seen some useful techniques for studying curves and surfaces, we can get stuck into some other, more complicated shapes, like the breather here. It also has a constant negative Gauss curvature, and is hyperbolic at every point. New surfaces of this kind are still being discovered by mathematicians around the world.